I know it sounds very like a boring title, but it, I can assure you it's not. It'll be so interesting. You're going to tell all your friends and your mom and your mom's goldfish and your mom's goldfish is ex-husband. This video is gonna be looking at six books that I read during final year that I think will be helpful for you guys. Just to get new ideas, if you don't care, then click off now, because you probably don't have the attention span to watch the entire fucking video if it's about books, do you? Number one, Bad Blood by John Caryu. It's like a documentary in a book. It's a true story about this girl called Elizabeth Holmes, who had a company called Theranos which was supposed to be this blood test, which would take out a very small amount of blood and could test for a huge amount of diseases. She got over $500 million from investors for a, a product that never actually worked. And there's this investigative reporter from the Wall Street Journal, John, basically went after her and had to go through so many things to try and bring this story to the public. There's a bunch of stuff online about Elizabeth Elizabeth Holmes and I think uh, now she's gone to jail or something. Hey you, stop, like the video. I need these algorithms to like me so more people can see these videos. Thanks, thanks a lot. Book number two, Primal Branding by Patrick Scanlon. Patrick Hanlon. This book basically looks at branding and breaks it down into what are the building blocks of a brand to make it memorable? So why is a Nike a Nike? Why is the brand of the United States of America so prominent around the world? So one of the things they say that makes up a brand is the icons that surround it. So if you were to think of America, there's so many icons. There's the stars and stripes on the flag, Mount Rushmore, the Statue of Liberty, Hollywood, New York City. There's so many icons related to America that it sort of strengthens its brand over time. And then another one they talked about was um, the believers and the non-believers. So to be a great brand, you have to define who you are, but also who you are not. And one very famous example of that was in 1997, Apple did a advertising campaign called Think Different, which was in direct response to a campaign that IBM did, which was their sort of rival at the time, that was called Think. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. Book number three of six, Algorithms to Live By, a computer science book that is more chunky to read, but was very interesting in terms of how to apply computer science to everyday life. It just goes over a lot of interesting things in daily life, such as scheduling theory. How should you schedule your time to get stuff done in the most efficient way possible? It looks at stuff like caching, how your computer organizes files, and how your brain organizes files, and how those two things sort of relate to each other. It was just incredibly interesting. Uh, I call it like accessible science. These next three, I don't have with me they're in my parents house the first one is Atomic Habits by James Clear the most memorable thing in it for me was a thing called the law of marginal gain the basic mathematical premise was if you were to get 1% better at one particular thing every day for 365 there goes the timer if you were to get 1% better at a skill every single day for 365 days you would be 37 times better at that thing by the end of the year they related that to this guy called dave brailsford who was the head of sky science sky science a uh, sky sports cycling team how he used that tactic of getting one percent better from how the cyclists washed their hands how they adjusted the material on the bike seat so that it was a little bit more comfortable he sort of applied this to every aspect of the cyclist's life and that team has become incredibly successful since they've won the tour de france they sweeped up the medals in the olympics in both 2012 and 2016. Uh, last two books oversubscribed by daniel Priestley. so this book looks at why some businesses are oversubscribed i think if you were to think of examples you'd think of the supremes of this world or if you're in ireland boojum at lunchtime there's always a big line of people outside it's sort of looking at how can you get to that point in your business where there's way more demand than supply. The biggest thing I took from that was there, he talks about knowing your capacity. If you're in business, you're always thinking about, well, what's my next sale? Or how can I get more business in? More, 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 more. You have to know in yourself and in your business, what's 
the limit to the amount of clients that you can take on and give them an exceptional customer experience. I know for myself that if I take on too many clients, the overall quality will suffer. Clients recommending me to other people then is gonna become harder um, because they're not gonna get that really outstanding customer service that I wanna give them. Knowing your capacity is really powerful because it means that you're actually gonna say no to some opportunities simply because you're booked, you're booked out at that time. And then the last book is more philosophical. <clears throat> the Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. So I've been following Ryan Holiday's blog for years. He's one of the only people who I actually enjoy reading the emails he sends out because he doesn't send them out very frequently. And when he does, they're normally very well thought out. The obstacle is the way is taking a lot of life's challenges and relating it to ancient philosophers or people who've struggled with stuff way in the past, hundreds of years ago. He often quotes Epictetus, which was a Greek philosopher. And I think overall that book is just good at putting life in perspective because it's so easy in the world we live in today where you think that the problems that you're having now are completely different to what people would have had 20, 30 years ago, never mind 100 years ago. That book made me realize that you can learn a lot from the past and also to when things are getting difficult to focus and double down on sort of what's important. Books are cool, man. I, I really like them. Uh, I like to read them to relax in the evening time, especially because like being on your phone all the time, you'll just stay up the whole night. And at least I feel like I'm learning something from a book and I feel like I own it when I have the physical book. And thanks to just online, like books aren't really expensive these days, like 10, 15 quid for something that could last you a few weeks. That's a great deal. It is the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.